Hi, in today's video, I want to go over IP address management in Azure. Now, if you're deploying networks in the cloud or on-prem, there's going to be um, a lot of IP addresses that's going to be utilized. And with that, you're going to need to make sure that you can kind of there, uh, make sure there's no overlap in between networks that, even if they aren't connected, um, can be managed. So, but in the cloud, for example, there's a lot that can go on that can kind of make it hard maybe at times to kind of keep track of what subnets have been utilized, um, what address spaces you're using, especially as you continue to grow. And when you're utilizing various different um, uh, regions, I mean, there may be a time where you might accidentally use a subnet that's in the same block as another subnet um, if the two VNets aren't connected because essentially those are separate private networks but if you ever try to bring those networks together in some type of peering fashion then this is where you'll run into some problems so i ran across this tool called azure ip address management which it's uh, being developed by two azure um, or microsoft architects um, i believe if you go to their github repo here um, it has some little information. So Matt here, um, really responsive in terms of uh, any questions you need. So I had deployed this to kind of test it out. And that's what I'm going to kind of walk you through here. So you can go to their uh, link here. And it kind of gets you a little info on like getting started. So you'll want to go through and make sure that you have like all the different permissions level set. So I'm setting this up in a lab environment. So the user that I'm using to sign in has Azure um, uh, owner rights to the subscription, the tenant, whatever, everything it needs. So kind of go through this. This script will actually deploy everything that's needed. And to do that, you can go to your to their repo, click on code, and take their copy that. And then in your editor of choice, I'm using uh, Visual Studio Code. You can do a clone or a git clone and then throw it in there and it'll download everything. So I already have this repo downloaded, so let me find it here. Oh, open folder. Now oh, let's add one. So let's see, we got, I can find where I downloaded it to, IP main, there we go. So I'm gonna add that in here. And let's get rid of all this here. So, so now all of this here. So it's just a basic. Um, it's a, it's a slew of different. Um, you know, Docker image. Um, compose compose files. Um, they got some stuff for the UI. Just some more Docker stuff. But um, to deploy this using PowerShell, we're gonna go into this folder here, and you're gonna need Azure CLI. PowerShell at least 7.2, I believe it was. So let me see what version I'm on here. So 7.2.6, which I believe is the latest. So I'm gonna be on the latest version of PowerShell and you're gonna need um, the BICEP tool, which is, I believe if you Google it, it's Azure BICEP install should take you to a page here so just walk through this page you can install it in the CLI here so AZ bicep should be an install Windows so there you go just run that install it so you'll need that and then you also need Microsoft graph so you can just do and for that one you can just do a um, install module, then name, and then Microsoft.graph. Then once you have all those things installed, we can go into the folder there. Yeah, users. And I think that's again, and deploy. All right, so we're going to go into the deploy folder, and what you're going to do is you're going to run a deploy. You're going to run that script, deploy.ps1, location, and then the location that you want to um, 
put it into. But before that, before you do that, we're going to first connect to Azure. So you're going to do a connect AZ account. And it's going to have me sign in. Authentication complete. Then if you want to set to a different, um, you can do it. I think it's a get AZ account. Easy. Maybe subscription. Let me figure out the command set easy subscription CLI. Because if you have multiple subscriptions, you can choose which one you specifically. Okay, there you go. So AZ account set a subscription name, then a name ID. That way, so if say you have a sandbox subscription, you can throw it in there versus throwing this all into prod. So, but I got just one. So then I'm going to do my deploy and then location. And the location is the look, uh, basically the region you want to throw this in. So mine's going to be East US and then enter. And then we're just going to run this once. So this one, uh, this part here takes about five minute ish because it has to deploy. Um, I think it's like a Cosmos database. It actually talks about it. And let's go back to the website here. So all of the things that it has to deploy, you can kind of see in here. So we got the app engine, the IPM UI, app service plan. Well, so the app service plan, Cosmos DB, Key Vault, storage account, and managed identity. So it uses all of this to basically create this um, website that then will in turn show all of our information that's inside of um, Azure. So with, while that's running, what I'm gonna do is open up a new terminal. And let's go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually deploy some resources into Azure real quick. So I'm going to go into my Terraform folder. I believe I have a lab. Let's see which one this is. So this is going to deploy some virtual networks. It's going to do some peering. So you can see I'm peering from one network to the other. And then we got our network one, network two. And then inside of my locals file, I have a bunch of subnets that's being created. Various, um, and then down here I have a, I believe I have a loop. Uh, that's a subnet there. Let's see if I'm using my locals file in here. I might have switched it back to just, oh yeah, okay. So for each locals.subnet2, each value dot name, resource group, all that. So it's going to create 10 of those. So I'm going to do a Terraform init. Initialize the back end, all the modules required that's needed. And then we're going to do a Terraform. I would usually do a Terraform plan, then an apply. But I already know that I want this all deployed. So I'm just going to go ahead and do the apply. Terraform apply dash auto approve just to get rid of the um, the need to hit yes on the approval. So let's go back to our other terminal, see what's going on there. So that's still deploying. So if we go to Azure, we should be able to see that some of those are being created. It's gonna create its own resource group as well too. So we go here under resource groups. So it's still not to that stage yet. Let's go back here. Usually after this third warning selection, we should start to see the um, deployment kick off. And that deployment only takes about five or 10 minutes, I'd say. But if we go back to our Terraform here, we'll see all this gets created. So I'm gonna let all this cr get created and come back here. It should take about five, 10 minutes.
All right, so once we get the deploy, um, uh, well, you know what? So let's see, we got, um, oh, you know what? I used the wrong account to log in. So that's an area you'll get if you're, the account you use can't access the, um, cannot create a role. So I'm going to have to run this again here. Uh, all right, let's run this again. Actually, let's go in and delete the other one. Go back to resource groups. One of that. Delete. Resource group name, that's the wrong one. So, yeah, let's, so I'll run this again, come back. Now our Terraform finished, but there was some errors, but these I don't have to worry about. It's just basically saying it skipped those, the name or something was wrong. So once this finishes, we'll come back and then go through that again. Come through, redeploy. All right, so deploy successfully this time. So now we're gonna go over to the Azure portal and let's check out our resource groups. Uh, let's do a quick refresh. Well, that might be the old one. Sometimes uh, the Azure portal has caching problems, so this looks to be the new one here. So now we should see, so we got our deployment script, app service, the plan it runs on, the database, the key vault, for the authentication, uh, managed identity, and storage account. Um, so if we go into the app service, which is the website, you should get a URL here. Now you can set this to, um, if you go into the networking, you can kind of limit who can get access to this. Right now it's open to the outside world. So I'm gonna go to this here now. I'm gonna log in as your Windows account and then going into this. Now this is where everything gets configured. So you first come in, you want to go to admins and you want to add in the user who's going to be uh, managing it, all your admins, and then hit save here at the top. And if you have multiple subscriptions, you can then, if you want to uh, limit certain ones, you can click on them. If it's red, that means it won't see anything in those uh, subscriptions. So we're going to leave that the way it is. And then we're going to go into configure. So you're, to go to, you're going to want to configure a space. So a space is just, you know, anything you want to call it. So prod, you know, production, network, create. And then you want to select that and you want to click create a block. So basically your block is going to be, you know, prod block. And then the cider for that is going to be whatever network you have so I believe I have 10 um, 10 1 0 0 slash 16 10 0 okay so 10 0 and 10 1 so product block is going to be 10 0 slash 16 and then we're going to create another block or another space we're going to call it dev or dev block, and then we're going to select that one, create a block for that one. There's going to be 10.1.0.0 slash 16. So we got dev and production. So now if we go, well, actually, we need to um, pair these with our virtual network. So you go to select the block, hit virtual networks, and then you should see the one that goes with what the uh, cider is. So you want to make sure you put the correct cider in there so it can actually see it. And then we'll hit apply there. And then it's kind of weird here. You might think something else is going on, but you just hit cancel. Probably put in a pull request for that to get fixed. And then if 
we go to oh it looks like it already picked this one up so now if we go into our um, spaces here you can kind of see that well actually it didn't pick that one up so let's go back into figure so reduction prod block on the virtual networks main apply okay that one worked right that time so then now if we go into spaces here you can see total IPs the blocks uh, V nets so any V nets um, these are assigned are showing unassigned and subnets see all your different subnets that have been already deployed in Azure and then any endpoints there so now basically that's it so they it's very um kind of just gives you a quick idea on some of the different um, they got some endpoints if you have like any servers or anything and then you can kind of do some peering see some peerings of analysis like you can visualize click on a space you can kind of see the breakdown of different subnets within that particular um, block. So um, I think over time it'll start to continue to get more advanced and better. Um, there, you know, unless you want to utilize something like IP, um, PHP IP, um, PHP IPM, or something that's you know paid, you're going to get more resources. But again, if you want to kind of just have something that easily visualizes the um, networks that you're utilizing. The peering relationships, uh, I believe if you come here, you can see the different peering relationships and things like that. It's really um, a project that's just going to be going to be ongoing. So I, I would definitely recommend to kind of, you know, go into these guys' uh, discussions that they have. Um, you can also, I think, yeah, here you can go to the discussions, ask questions, put in any requests for various things that could, could make it better, Q&A and stuff like that. So... Again, that's it. Um, you know, if you have any questions in regards to the setup, if you're trying to set this up in your environment, let me know or just reach out to these guys below. Again, thanks for tuning in. Hope to see you next time.